Hey there everybody, welcome back to Low Def Media. This is Mike. I want to thank you for taking time checking out the channel and today's topic. Now this is going to be kind of a broad topic. Uh, it's going to start off, like the title mentioned, talking about the ZV-E1 and then that's going to lead us into other parts of the conversation. So let's start with that. If you're a fan of the channel, you probably saw my recent short talking about the ZV-E1 and why. Okay, so who is this really catering to? Now, Sony says that this camera is catering towards content creators, and that would be people like you and like me. But I would submit that a $2,300 camera with no lens, and if you get a pretty decent lens, that's gonna be about $500. So now you're creeping up to that $3,000 mark. I don't see how that's going to be geared towards the average content creator. Now I said the same thing when the A7S III came out because that particular camera was $3,500 and I could not believe the number of content creators who went out and purchased that camera for making videos on YouTube. Videos just like this one. The one that I'm shooting with my iPhone 13 mini using cinematic mode and this really cool small rig microphone set. And so I get the same effect they get, but I don't have to spend the $3,000 that they spent. So that's kind of my conversation today. Now I look at this camera and we'll start there. Looking at the camera itself, it's got a lot of cool specs and I can, I can admit that it's probably a great camera. Now I'll probably never own one and I certainly don't have one now to show you, and so I know it's probably a really good camera, but when you look at the internal specs, really good, similar to the A7S III, the A7C, I think they said it was uh, the uh, FX30 and uh, the R5. So those are some of the 7R5. So those are some of the cameras that it kind of stole from and they put those pieces and parts and uh, some of that AI technology into this camera. So that's the good part. But the bad part is it's built with plastic. Now it's recycled plastic, but still the build quality isn't great. So you have to worry about the durability, the longevity of the camera, and then it's not weather sealed. And so you, you can't treat it like those higher end cameras because it's a lower end camera. And what really perplexes me about this particular camera in the line of recent Sony cameras is that they've had three previous content creator centric cameras. Now they started off with the ZV, I think it was called the ZV-E, okay? And so the ZV-E or ZV-1, that's what it was, ZV-1. Now the ZV-1 uh, was by all measures, um, if, you, if you watch YouTube, anybody who's looked at this camera says it's great for YouTube, it's great for content creation, it's got a, a fixed lens, but it does have a, a zoom on there. The only real downside to this camera is that the, the field of view is rather small. I think it's like 27 millimeter. And so it's kind of tight, but they do have, I know there are a bunch of, uh, well, there's at least one third party country, a third party company, Ulanzi, that made a wide angle lens for it. So that solves that problem. So you got a 4K shooter. It's got all the, the features that you could expect from a content creator centric camera and it's less than $800. So that to me solved the problem. Sony came out with a camera that works for content creators that hits that under $1,000 price point. Okay, great. A lot of people gravitated to that camera. Well, then they came out with the, I think it's the ZV-E10 which was a camera that uh, no longer had a fixed lens, but that you could have interchangeable lenses. Now that opened, opened up a lot of opportunity when it comes to different lenses. Still a great sensor, it's 4K, all these bells and whistles, very similar uh, to the ZV-1. So it's a great camera and it's still under $1,000. So I'm thinking, okay, they've done it twice. They've come out with the fixed lens camera. They've come out with one that you can buy multiple lenses for. This is great. Content creators rejoice. But then they came out with the ZV-1F. ZV-1F. Another fixed lens. Now it's a little wider. I think it's 23 um, millimeter lens. And so it's a little wider field of view than the first iteration. And so, hey, 
I'm thinking this, and it's it's much less expensive. It's $4.99. And so this is a much better price point. It's got all the bells and whistles. It's got the product showcase. It's got the blurry background. It's got all these different things that, again, we've come to expect from content creation and from cameras that we want to use to create our content with. It's very light, it's nimble, great. All right, so I look at that and I say, they've got three cameras that content creators can now afford. Plus they've got a slew of other older um, 6,000 series cameras that people can use if they want to do talking head videos, leave them in their, in their office. But if you look at all the videos on those three cameras, everybody just, they went wild for them and they're extremely popular. Okay, now that's great. Then they have the Sony camp and during that, they have the release of the ZV-E1. And again, we've talked about it, the price point, all the different features. I think it's overkill. It's like the A7S III, people using that to make videos on YouTube. It's overkill, too much. We really don't need it. So that leads me kind of into my second part, which is camera commercialism, where as a content creator, if you want to follow your favorite content creator, I'm not going to name any names, but there are plenty that I started watching years ago that were wonderful. They showed you how to use Lightroom. They showed you how to use your cell phone to create videos. They, use, they showed you how to edit, how to frame shots, com, uh, you know, compose a shot, all these different tools that you could use to become a better content creator. Then they got popular. And once they got popular, they started getting brand deals. And now most of their videos on their channel is pushing products. Now that's great for them. They make money, they get free gear. But for us, it really puts us in a very vulnerable spot because as content creators, obviously we wanna make good content and it makes it appear like the only way we could do that is if we get the really cool gear that they're trying to sell. And so that's why you know we end up with 15 different cameras even though we really only need one. Now I'll, I'll be the first to admit, I do that. I am very influenced by influencers. And that's why it's frustrating. I'm looking here, I've got a Fuji XA5, which I was going to use strictly for my in-studio content, okay? I've got a microphone, a Blue Yeti, it's great. But then I saw another uh, dynamic microphone that was on sale and I bought that one, it's the F-Deuce microphone. And I've got this wireless microphone. I've got a DJI Osmo Action 2 because I needed an action camera and this one's really small. But then I've also got the GoPro 10 because this is a great action camera. And I like the photos out of this and the video better than I like this. But look at that. This is easier to carry. I take this on uh, going on a run with me and this is great. Just turn it sideways and you can make um, content, you know, the profile content or portrait uh, for making YouTube shorts and Instagram reels. So they both are great cameras, but they serve different purposes. So you feel like you have to have more than one. And so then that just leads you down the bunny trail of all the different things that are associated with content creation. And we haven't even mentioned the software because one day you'll see a content creator uh, that's very popular say, you need to go out and get Epidemic Sound. Then the next day they're gonna say it's Artlist. Then the next day they're gonna say it's something else. Storybooks, you need this, you need that. All these are subscriptions, they all take money. One day it's Final Cut Pro then the next day it's gonna be Premiere Pro. Then, oh no, everybody needs DaVinci Resolve. And so it gets to the point where as, as somebody who's new or trying to improve their channel and they haven't quite hit that top tier yet, you're like, okay, I wanna do, I wanna spend my dollars the best I can so I can get the best content or create the best content and hopefully attract viewers. And so it, it, it's like, Right now, everybody's on the DaVinci Resolve bandwagon, all right? Everybody's on the Sony uh, ZV-E1 bandwagon. Everywhere you look, they're all reviewing this camera saying it's the greatest thing ever. Uh, then next week, it'll be something else, and you're constantly in this, this position where you're wondering, well, what should I get? I mean, if you look back here, that camera right there, which I still love to use and is still very um, good, uh, this is a Canon, EOS um, T7i, okay, DSLR camera, only shoots 1080p. It's got 24 megapixel photos, great camera. It's way old, but it still works and it's wonderful. This iPhone works, it's wonderful. So 
I guess what I'm saying is what I'm going to do is start focusing more on creating content with the tools that I have and stop buying newer tools. Get really good with this because in the end that you'll hear him say gear doesn't matter until it does. Well, as long as you've got gear, that's the, that's the best place to start. My encouragement to you, and this is what really started helping me out is find something that you feel comfortable using most of the time that you will take with you when you go places so that you can create your content. Yesterday I took my Fuji Ace, uh, AX Z A5, a Z? No, I am way old and this stuff just gets all combobulated up in my head. The Fujifilm X-A5 took that yesterday on a walk to a park. It's very small, it's an easy to carry camera. Got some pictures, took some video, and it was so nice to have a camera in my hand and take it outside of the house and use it. Feel comfortable with it because I know how this camera operates. The uh, audio was really good in with the internal speakers and because it was super sunny yesterday, got some really good video. So that's my encouragement, is stop chasing the camera rabbit. Don't get caught up in the camera commercialism. Really hone your skills, figure out what you wanna do. And this is something I struggled with and this is where I'll end. I had to decide, do I wanna be one of those content creators that uses the flashy graphics, all the jump cuts and, and does the music and um, all the different B-roll, or do I wanna be a content creator because my channel is geared to low def media, doing more with less? And so my, the strength of my channel isn't my videography skills because I will never be that guy who gets all the B-roll, who cuts that in, who does the music, who does the great graphics, who does the jump cuts. That's not why people come to my channel. It's not why you're here. The reason why you're here is because I give you insight on things like this. A Sony point and shoot camera that I've had for years that if you're looking to take on a trip, that would be a great option. That's why you're here, inexpensive gear. So to wrap it up, focus on you. Focus on the tools you've got. If you've got a cell phone, if you've got a camera already and it's doing the job, get really good with that. And then when you know what it is you need, you can go out there and look for that piece of equipment that's gonna fill that need or you know, cover that gap. And so, hey, that's all I got. This is Mike, this is Lodef Media. Thank you for taking the time, watching the channel, suffering through this entire video. And if you're still here, hey, do me a favor, hit that like button. And if you like this kind of content, hey, become a subscriber and do me a favor. Go down in the comments and let's start a dialogue. Let me know your thoughts on camera commercialism. Do you get overwhelmed with all the advertisements? Or do you kind of like it? Do you like hearing from all these content creators and their viewpoints on different pieces of equipment, cameras, lights, microphones, and whatnot? Let me know in the comments. Love to hear from you. So hey, take care and we will see you in the next one.